Um, so that's what this says right here, this, this little bit there. Uh, well, I guess I don't say that explicitly. But there, starting with that, if we know that it's concave down and the slope is zero, we must have a maximum. And that's what, yes, that's what that says. If we have a zero slope, we know that we possibly have a minimum or a maximum. If at that very point, the concavity is up, right, positive second derivative, we must have a minimum. So that's the second derivative test. What does the second derivative test test for? Yes, not concavity. Now this seems strange and kind of weird and naturally confusing, all right? Because the second derivative is the way you figure out what concavity you're dealing with. It's not a test for concavity, it's still a test for extrema. Okay, can it tell you about concavity? Of course it can. Can it tell you whether concavity switches from one concavity to the other? Yes, it can. Are you biting, what are those called where we switch concavity? Points of inflection, okay? So those are things that we want. Like, imagine this. So far, we could figure out where the maxima are, where the minima are, where the points of inflection are, where the x-intercepts are, where the y-intercepts are. That's a lot of information. Right? All that information put together, we can draw a pretty decent graph of the function. Okay? Like we're trying to put all this together. Um, so, if we find all those things, we can, we can graph the function. That's what we want to do. Now, if the, the derivative is 0 and I should have put, yeah, there is. You can see it on your computer probably better. There's a double prime right there. If f prime is 0 and f double prime is 0, we don't know what to make. What's, what may be going on when f double prime is 0? Point of, point of inflection. That's the only way we can possibly have a point of inflection, right? Because for, for, okay, so for, uh, to have a point of inflection, what's the definition of a point of inflection? Concavity changes. Concavity changes. Yeah, there's a switch from concavity that is down to concavity that's up or vice versa. Or in other words, a second derivative that's positive to a second derivative that's negative. The only way for a function to go from positive to negative is to cross through what value? Zero. zero, right? The function, the second derivative, is, is a function that has these, these y values, and its y values tell you about the concavity. So if the second derivative's y value, the value of the function, switches from positive to negative or vice versa, you have a point of inflection, you have a switch in concavity, okay? Um, so if we want to find out if we do have a point of inflection, right, kind of like the first derivative test did for extrema, we look to the left, look to the right, did it switch concavity, right? Did we take a third derivative? Okay, yeah, we could, but I don't know, maybe that's a good question. Right? If we took a third derivative, we could see if it is, let's see, if it's worth zero. Yeah, I don't know, I have to think about that for a second. Uh, we could keep doing that, but maybe we don't have a third derivative. Maybe that's not possible. So that wouldn't really be that informative. Um, second derivative, that's, that's about where we're in. Okay, so we see a switch, we've got a point of inflection. So let's run through real quick, I hope real quick, a few exercises that I just pulled from, uh, you know, everybody where I was seeing mistakes. Okay, just so that we can be clear. So we'll start with just recognizing concavity. What concavity do you see here? Concave up, okay? So if we see the second derivative is greater than zero, isn't that surprising? No. No, and so it's asking, where is f prime less than zero? What does that mean about the function? Negative. Negative what? Slope. Negative slope. So I can't, I don't know why I can't grab this. Uh, oh, this was somebody's actual work. Oh, you can see oh, that was incorrect and incorrect. Oh, now we got it. That was somebody's actual work. I thought I could just grab that thing, but apparently I cannot. That's all right. Okay. Uh, so if I'm just part of below, where is f prime greater than zero? What does that mean? Um, positive slope. Positive slope. And f double prime is less than zero. Well, this whole thing is concave down. Right? So, 
So the, my worry here is that maybe you could guess, right? Guess just right, because this this uh, highlighted area is just narrow enough that you got if you got just lucky enough, you could just be like, I don't know, here, 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 here. Okay, I got it. And maybe if you were really lucky, you could just guess right on the first time, a few times in a row. If you're really lucky. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay, here we go. No. Oh. Uh, very similar to the one we just looked at. Okay, now we have some different concavities, right? What concavity? I like to start with concave. I don't know what, what you like. It's greater than zero, so it's concave up. Where is it concave up? Bam! Can you give me some x values where it's concave? Negative five. Negative two. Where? Negative one. 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 Um, so that was the first guess. Uh, it is concave up here. So where are we now? Where are we here? The right side. Yeah, it's concave here. Down. Um, it's yeah, it's concave down. We want concave up. So that's the way. We want where f prime is greater than zero, which means the slope is. So we're in here, right? So as soon as that person puts that in there. Could it could oh it's barely be a lot of those where I'd be like, yeah, it's right here. It's like wrong. And I'd like move it over like this much and I was like, oh, okay, that's wrong. Like, oh. Which is training your eye. You right? <laughs> and you just would like this to the sky. Yeah, because it was always on like you only need to get like one or two more right and you're done. <laughs> and then you just miss it. <laughs> this one and the game includes that zero slope. Right? Okay, now we're getting hints and we're like, oh my gosh. Somewhere in well that what is that little highlight of orangeness telling us? That's where what's going on. What's that? Yeah, prime of x is greater than zero. Right, we got some zeros or some uh, positive slopes there. Right? Between the two zeros, we've got positive slopes. All the other slopes are negative. Right, highlighting this first part. Okay. Some tried there. That was incorrect. Maybe this is Jason's work. He's Hopefully, <laughs> jumping all over the place. Okay, that's where it's concave up. So in the, there's some, like an overlap of the concave upness and the, the uh, derivative positiveness. Okay. So you have to have a perfect one. Well, yeah, it's not that. I want to avoid the zero slope. I want to definitely avoid the point of inflection in the right. I would just barely get it to the right of the zero. Because the zero slope is easier to see than the point of inflection. It's harder to spot. Um, okay, so we've graduated from recognizing concavity to using concavity to tell us something about the original function. Okay. Um, the graphs in 8 identify the x-coordinates where the graph uh, has a, an inflection point. So this is the graph of f double prime. F double prime. Okay. So we're supposed to find where, it has a, has, have, where the original function has an inflection point, point of inflection. How does this graph tell us about that? Where f double prime equals zero. Where f double prime equals zero is our, our prime candidate for point of inflection. So that's where f double prime equals zero. That's where f double prime equals zero. If you're thinking that's not where, where it's horizontal, right? That's not what we're looking at, right? We're looking at the zero, the, the y value of the second derivative. So it's worth zero there, right? Negative one comma zero, one comma zero. Right. Is that all? Did you just find all the zeros of the second derivative? No. no. Changes. Changes. Concavity. Changes concavity. The, the second derivative changes sign. Okay. So how about negative three? Is that a point of inflection? No. No, because no. it's negative to negative. How can, can somebody draw a, a graph that is negative concavity and then negative concavity again? How did yours look square? Uh, it comes, comes down and then it kind of flattens the horizontal. Comes down like this? Yeah, and then goes down. This concave more. down? Oh, sorry. That is. Like this. Yeah. And then does it keep going? How does it be concave down again? It just has to go back to concave up. Well, what if it has a little flat? stays concave down, concave down. Well, like a slope of zero and then down. Slope of zero? 
that possible? Look at that. Look at, let me grab a right on top of this thing. No, only if it. If you come down like this, so that's concave out. Yeah. And then it's concave. But that's no, that would be a point of deflection. That's we're trying to not get that. No, it's possible. What? One way it can be possible is like it could be like a high order polynomial where technically we have a, a zero derivative and a zero second derivative. That can happen with like a fourth degree or whatever that has, I mean, that, that can happen. It's possible that we have a zero slope and a zero second derivative, okay? So those kinds of things will happen. Uh, on this side it could, but we see how we kind of, let's see, its slopes are negative and they're getting their most negative. Um, its slopes are very big. Let's see. And they're getting, no, that would be the point we can, well, it's hard to tell anything without the first derivative as well. We can't tell about its concavity, what it looks like we're kind of guessing at, but we do know that it's concave down all throughout here, and here it changes to concave up. And that switch could be really subtle. It just starts to curve up <coughs> rather than being curved down. Now it's curving up, and now it's curving down. So where are the inflection points according to this graph of f double prime? Negative one, Negative one. and one. We switch from concave up. Down. Down. Down, because it's the negative y value of the second derivative, right? The second derivative itself is concave up, but that's not, we don't care what it looks like, we care that it is a negative number. And it switches to a positive number, concave down, concave hard to keep it all straight sometimes with well, the y value of this tells me about the shape of that, but I don't care about the shape of this. I don't care about the shape of the second derivative, I care about the y value of the second derivative. So it switches from right negative values, negative, 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 all concave down to positive values. And still positive, it's all positive, 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 positive throughout here. And it switches back to negative. So it switches from concave okay. to concave. Yeah. So you see a point of inflection there. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, so that was one and negative one. One and negative one are points of inflection. The x values of points of inflection. To find the y value of the point of inflection has to have the original function. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we have an actual function, right? Not just a graph, but an equation function. Y equals x to the fourth, kind of washed out. Let me write it for you. Plus x to the third minus 18x squared plus 8. Wants to know where is this concave down? Like this is more like. Really get all sorts of questions on the, on the AP test. The, all sorts of different stuff. This is one where they give you an equation, actual equation, and from that you're supposed to derive where is it to concave down. So what are we gonna do? Find the second derivative. Find the second derivative, which first means we have to find the first derivative. So here we go, we're finding it. 36x. Second derivative is 12x squared plus 6x minus 36. All right, we found the second derivative. We're gonna find where it's concave down. When it stops being concave down, okay, when it's concave down, what is the second derivative? Negative. It's negative. When it's concave down, the original function, this one, is concave down, this guy is negative. Okay, 
How will I know when this function stops being negative? Where will that happen? It has to cross through zero. It's got to go through zero. So we got to find where it is. Zero. Set it equal to zero, right? And solve for x. Find the x's that cause the v second derivative to be zero. Okay. So we set it equal to zero. I'm going to divide everything by six at the same time. So I'll get two x squared plus x minus six equals zero. Hopefully we can factor this. Uh, 2x x and minus 2 plus 3. Plus 3 minus 2? Yes. I think we got it back, Robert. Yeah. Plus 2. Or did you say that? Minus 3 plus 2. Plus 3 plus minus 3 minus 2. Because it's the x. Yeah. Yeah. But remember, there's a 2x. Yeah, right. 2x times 2 is 4x. Minus 3x is gives us that 2x. So x equals 3 atoms, x equals negative 2. Does that tell us where it's concave down? No, it tells us where it stops being concave down. Possibly changes, definitely changes? No. Possibly changes. Possible points of inflection. How do we find out exactly where this thing is concave down? What's that? Yeah, it takes some points. How many points? One in between those two, uh -huh. and then one to <laughs> yeah. the other side. Just three, right? Um, negative two, that's the furthest left, right? From the left of negative two all the way up to negative two, it must have the same concavity. And from negative two to three halves, it must have some concavity, and not necessarily different from the concavity it already had, but it will have some concavity that's the same throughout that interval. And beyond three halves, the right of three halves, it will have some concavity that is the same for that entire interval from three halves all the way to infinity. Right, so we've got to find some points to the left of negative two, in between negative two and three halves, and to the right of three halves. And then we'll know exactly what the intervals are, and once we know whether it's positive or negative, or where it is negative, we'll know where it's concave down. Okay. And we can't really find where it's concave down without also finding where it's concave up. Right? We can't just like find only the information we want. So let's say we take a negative three. Right, to the left of negative two. What am I going to do with that? X equals <coughs> negative three. What's that? What do, what happens when I plug negative three into the original function? What does it tell me? Why value the function in negative three? Right. Perhaps very not interesting information. Now, maybe maybe it is information I want, but it's just it's a, a, a point that I chose because it's to the left of negative two, and I'm going to find the y value. So. It's not all that useful, but that is what it tells me. Here, do you see how, how we have a ton of information and we need to organize it? Mm -hmm. Right, it's helpful to organize it in a little table. Right. So x values, um, talk about f of x if we want, f prime of x, f double prime. You know, do we care a whole lot about f of x or f prime of x? We're not trying to figure out if there's a maximum or a minimum or anything like that. We're just trying to figure out if it's concave down or concave up. So we really are not that concerned with that. Um, so this would be x is less than negative 2. x is negative 2. Uh, x is between negative 2 and 3 halves. x is 3 halves. halves, x is bigger than 3 halves. Uh, we know that here we have a 0, a 0 there. And so we're just looking at positive or negative, it's concave up, it's concave down, we plug in negative 3. Now what do we do with negative 3? Let's say we, we're going to, well, let's say we're interested in negative 3 because it's to the left of negative 2. What are we going to do with it? So which one? Put it in the second The second one. The second one tells me about concavity. So I plug that one in there. Uh, not that one, right? Because that was an equal to zero. Here. Positive. Positive. Uh, minus uh, 18. Like, you just went ahead and found it, or? Immediately obvious. We got negative 36 minus 12. No, minus 18. 
Well, unless this will be positive, which one times? It's positive. You got it? For sure. 9 times 12 is 108. It's been coming up a lot lately. 108 minus 18 minus 36. That's not going to be 108, is it? So it's definitely positive. We don't care about that. Okay. How about between negative 2 and 3 halves? Zero. I love zero because it's so easy. It's negative. It's negative. So it's. Okay, down. That's a, you know, we're trying to answer the question here. And let's say two, or let's say 800 million. Right? I mean, anything to the right of three halves. We don't have to be so. You know what I mean? So, yeah, if, if I put in 800 million squared times 12 plus. Six times eight hundred million. We're getting really big, and then we subtract thirty-six. No. Not going to be negative. We could have done the same with negative. We could have gotten negative fifty thousand. Um, though that would have been a little tricky because that would have been a negative and a negative. But you know something about this function, don't you? You know the end behavior of this function. You know that it, it, given a big enough negative x value, this becomes so much bigger than this or this. That's why parabolas go up on both ends or down on both ends. Okay. So it's positive, then it's negative, then it's positive. And the negative interval from negative 2 to 3 halves, okay, from negative 2 to 3 halves right there, that's our answer, right? I wonder if it'll let me answer it. Oh, it looks like it's a little, yeah, we did it. Okay. Okay, how do we, so it's asking for inflection points. Nope, I'm gonna cover this up, right? You can't see it anymore. Uh, how do we know if we have a point of inflection? Definition of a point of inflection. Changing concavity. What does the second derivative have to say about concavity? Up or down, positive up, negative down. Okay, even though this graph looks weird, that's the only question we have to ask. Does it change from a positive to a negative? <laughs> Does the concavity change? I'm pretty sure Okay. This is the second derivative. So we're looking for the second derivative to change from concave up to concave down? Yeah, no, 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 positive, no, positive to negative. Okay, so does that happen anywhere? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Negative two changes from negative to positive, so the original function changes from concave down to concave up. So we have an inflection point at negative two. Let me check that one out. Oh, right. Okay. Here? Yeah, that's that. That's a silly question. Now, what kind of values are we finding here? And here. Did it switch from positive to negative? Yeah. Is there a point of inflection? Yes. Strange as it seems. Yes. There it is. Uh, so at where? At two. Okay. And three. From negative to positive, concave down to concave. There, those are all of our points of inflection. Wait, is this F prime? Or like F this is F double prime right there. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's probably hard to see from where you're sitting. Because this thing is kind of small. That should be it. You got it. What is the x coordinate of the point of inflection? Okay, so this, I think I put this in the right order here. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say, like, every book, every teacher, every approach is going to be different in the most simple way that it can be different is it can be in a different order, okay? I noticed this one came up. It comes, exponential functions are coming up before we would normally cover them in the class that I teach, but it's not a big deal, okay? It's just a new function, well, a couple of new functions, e to the x and an inverse trigonometric function. Okay, so if ever doubt, if you see a function, you see the inverse tangent function, how, what's the derivative of the inverse tangent of x? Do you know where to find out what the derivative of the inverse tangent of x is? Inverse tangent. No, it's 1 over 1 plus x. Yeah. You can find it in the front of your book on that little like thin cardboard thing. 
very, very first thing you see in your book is like a thing for names, and right next to that is a bunch of derivatives. Okay. But let's just uh, let's take a look at what we see in our book. Okay, so there's the derivative. Of the inverse tangent of some function. So what it's doing is saying, like, if you need to use the chain rule, here's how that would look. Does that make sense? So it's going to look like this: u prime over uh, one plus u squared. We're going to check that. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Very front of the book. Right there, a okay. bunch of derivatives right there. Okay, so the inverse tangent, not the tangent with the h, that's that's for, oh, this is arc tangent. Arc tangent is the same as the inverse tangent. Uh, yeah, it says u prime plus 1 over 1 plus u squared. Okay, you can't see it here, but it's y equals e to the inverse tangent of x. Okay. There's another function here. Do you see another function besides tangent, inverse tangent of x? <sighs> to e to the not squared, but to, it, to an invariable power, right? That's an exponential function. Okay. So the derivative of that guy, this is really cool, and I would like, like love to build it up and review it in some cool way. But this is a really crazy thing. Okay, the derivative of e to the x. Hey, over there. What's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. e to the x. Oh. <laughs> That's really tough. That's not even that hard. Okay. The derivative of a function is itself. That's, e to, that's what e to the x is. Okay. It's not the only function that's like that, but it's probably the simplest one. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And think about what that means. You look at e to the x, it's this big exponential function, right? The curve's crazy, crazy steep, and, and crazy steeper as it goes. The y value of that function is its own slope. Not only is the y value of the function, it is the slope of the function. Okay, so now what we have is a, now what we have is a, a composition of functions. We need to use the So we're going to do? We're going to find the x-coordinate of the point of inflection. How do we find a point of inflection? Oh, uh, second derivative. Second derivative. So we've got to find the second derivative, yeah? yeah? Okay. So y prime, we're going to use our chain rule skills here. Okay. So the outside function is what? Uh, tangent. E to the x. Right? Is it tangent inside of the e to the x function? Yeah. Like x is replaced with, in, with the inverse tangent. For e to the x to be inside of the tangent, you'd see e to the x in here, right? The tangent would be taken out of the x. All right, so the outside function is e to the x. What's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x. That's amazing. So what's the derivative of e to the, tan the inverse tangent of x? It's e to the inverse tangent of x. But then we need to, by the chain rule, oh, no, multiply, it. multiply by the derivative of the inverse tangent. The derivative of the inverse tangent? Well, what's u is x, so what's u prime? What's the derivative of x? One. One, okay, so u prime in this case is one. One over one plus, that says u squared. What's u in this case? Yeah. Oh, no, x. Just x, yeah, right? The u is the thing that's inside the inverse standard function. It's just u. So it's just x squared. Okay. Is that it? We're down to the first derivative? Yeah. Yeah, we go. <laughs> derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so e to the inverse standard of x times the derivative of the inside function, which is the inverse tangent. It's just the inverse tangent of x. It's not the inside of the inverse tangent function. It's just x. So we take the second derivative. Okay. Well, first, let's, let's look at this as uh, e <coughs> to the inverse tangent of x over 1 plus x squared. How do we take the derivative of that? The quotient rule. Okay. So we got low. Hi, okay. What is this, this function? E 
to the inverse tangent of x. What's the derivative of e to the inverse tangent of x? We just took it. That it is this. So there it is again. You see? Inception of derivatives. So we're going to have to take the derivative of e to the inverse tangent of x. We've already done that. We got this. This itself is part of the second derivative. E, that doesn't look quite like an exponent, e to the inverse tangent of x over 1 plus x squared. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Because what happened? They're taking each other out. Well, minus e to the inverse tangent of x. Right? E I minus high D low. It's what? 2A. Derivative of 1 plus x squared. 2A. Easy. Over 1 plus x squared. 1 plus x squared. X squared. So that guy cancels out. That's great. Okay? X minus e to the inverse tangent of x times 2x over 1 plus x squared squared. What, what are we do, working on? What is this? It's the second derivative. Okay. Uh, what are we going to do with the second derivative? What are we ultimately trying to find? Oh, um, inflection point. Right? So what, what do we do with the second derivative finding inflection points? Oh, set it equal to zero. Set this equal to zero. It's going to make it a lot easier to solve. Okay? She's doing that right. What? How dare you? Straight up her. <laughs> um, Well, okay, let's make it work. Equal to zero. Is Jalen here? You think it's him? What are we going to do about this guy here? Multiply by it, right? By that thing. So that we cancel it on this side, multiply by zero on the other side, right? All we really have is the, de the, de or the numerator, excuse me, equal to zero. It's getting so much easier. Denominator's canceled out. This guy's gone now. Just the numerator has to be equal to zero. What do you notice here and here? What's that? Yeah, the e to the inverse tangent of x is a common factor between these two. So you can factor it out. e to the inverse tangent of x times 1 minus 2x equals zero. Okay. Then, so what is it? When we have something times something equals zero, what, why is that to our advantage? What do we do then? Maybe one of those things could be zero. One of those things would need to be zero. And that's the only way it can happen, right? You have two possibilities. That's zero, and that's zero. Let's grab another color and just move it over here. E, the inverse tangent of x equals zero. When will that happen? E to the exponent is zero. What's E? Oh, I know. I just it's that number. So that number is right back there. Two point six uh, whatever. Okay, like take oh. two point whatever. Raise it to a power. What are we trying to get out of it? What power will take a number to zero? It's not possible, right? Let's let's just try the number two. Two to the second. Two to the third. We are going the opposite way we want to go, right? We want to get towards zero. How about two to the negative one? What's that? It's still a fraction. A fraction, it's one over two to the positive one, right? Two to the negative two. One over two squared, that's one fourth. We're getting closer. You're just going to get closer to zero, right? Two to the negative one millionth power. Well, that's just one over two to the power. One over two, that's a big number. But one divided by a big number is not zero. It never will be. And that's the best we can hope for, getting really close to zero. So what's the solution to this equation? There isn't a solution. 
So that's out. How about this one? 1 minus 2x equals 0. Now x is. So we just solved for x and x is one half. But it's been so long since we started. What what did that tell us? Does it tell us the inflection point? Point to zero. Or it crosses through zero. What does? The graph be changes. Does it change the graph? Maybe. It maybe changes. Oh. Maybe is a point of inflection. Right? It maybe crosses through zero. Or maybe just touches zero from the back. Right? Maybe it's negative the whole time, so it's zero comes back down, or it's like positive the whole time. Okay, so how do we figure out if it's, what are we, if it's a point of inflection? Yes, something to the left, something to the right. Put it zero, it's a what? What, this? The second derivative. The second derivative tells its concavity. Does it switch concavity? Well, does the second derivative change signs? And we'll know that it changes concavity. Okay, so you plug that guy in. It is this over 1 plus x squared squared, OK? Uh, I'll leave that to you. I'm just plugging things in. Plug in 0, plug in like 1, or plug in 1 half, or plug in the square root of 3, or something that's bigger than 1 half. Okay. So plug in something that is to the left, like 0. Plug in something to the right, like the square root of 3, or something like that. We'll find out uh, if there is a point of inflection there. For now, we'll jump ahead. Oh, okay. Control GMT. On which intervals is it concave down? Let me write this function down for you in case you can't see it. f of x equals x minus 4 times e to the x. Well, now at least in this far as derivative take, we know about e to the x, right? What's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x. So we got ourselves here the need for what? Product. product rule. Product rule. Right, we're going to find concave down, we know, second derivative, right, let's get to work. f prime of x equals, should we do product rule or should we distribute the easy egg? Okay, let's distribute the easy egg. Uh, x e to the x, uh, we're going to need product rule anyway, I don't know. Product rule. Okay, we'll just do the product rule, forget it. Uh, so, this is u, this is v. Okay, u prime v, so that's 1 times e to the x. e to the x plus x minus 4 times e to the x, right? Easy to take the derivative of e to the x. Why? What's up? Can we borrow some computers? Oh, yeah. For who? Uh, Golden's. Yes. Right, okay. And then we need to do what? The derivative of the derivative. But first, can we do this? e to the x times 1 plus x minus 4, right? Right. e to the x factor, e to the x factor. If I distribute the e to the x, I get e to the x and e to the x times x minus 4. Oh. Whoa. times 1 plus, or sorry, um, x minus 3. So we take the derivative of that, take the second derivative. It's 
Try it out yourself. It's, it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same process. We'll factor out e to the x again. We'll get e to the x to the x plus two. All right, we're trying to find concave down. How do we do that? Set it to zero. e to the x times x minus two equals zero. e to the x equals zero. When will that happen? Never. You can never take a number to an exponent equals zero. Unless that number is zero. Zero squared would be zero. That's out, no solution. X could be two. X minus two equals zero, x equals two. Does that tell us where it's concave down? No, we have to do what? Uh, find a number. Uh, how about to the left, uh, like zero? Yeah. That's a great number. Is that gonna be positive or negative? That's what we care about, right? E to the zero is? One. one. Anything to the zero is one, except for zero, zero to zero. Yes? I thought we plugged it in second. Well, sure. Okay, so we go down to the second derivative. We put zero there. Okay, zero, that's one. Zero minus two, that's negative. Negative two times one is negative two. So what is that? What do we conclude from that? Negative. negative, which means about the function it is concave down. So all the way up to two, it is concave down. Right? For sure. Does it switch to concave up? I don't know. Try it out. Plug in the three. Well, is e to the 3 positive or negative? Positive. Was 3 minus 2 positive or negative? It's positive. So positive times positive is positive. So yeah, it's, not, it's concave up afterwards. So it must just be from negative infinity to 2 that it's concave down. Um, that takes us through, through concavity in the second derivative test. I'm going to have been, I've took up a lot of your time. So I'm going to go ahead and let you just dive in, OK? And I'll help you individually. So just continue with those three things, right? Concavity, which I think we're pretty much, almost all of us are done with, just highlighting that area. Concavity and the second derivative test, which we've been doing, and then the second derivative test, like just putting it all in 